In this video, I'm going to show you how you can annotate long non-coding RNA transcripts, or any RNA for that matter, using evolutionarily conserved RNA secondary structure predictions from this paper. You should be able to view and generate images similar to this one for the MALAT1 non-coding RNA. So the first step is to go into the UCSC genome browser. Click on the Genomes button, or tab, and you want to make sure you have the human genome selected because for the moment the predictions are only in human coordinates. Next, you're going to want to go into this Track Hubs section here. What Track Hubs are is basically a way to view public data or data from your collaborators without having to download big files onto your local computer or onto a server. Next, we're going to get the URL for the associated alignments. Uh, predictions, sorry. So if you go into the supplementary information from the, the paper here, supplementary data, there should be a link for this website where you can then access, um, download all the data and as well access this URL for the track hub associated to the predictions. We're going to copy that URL into the My Hubs tab here and then simply add the hub to your local repository. Use this selected hub and then this is going to take us into a genome browser view of um, your region of interest. Now you can select which gene you want to look at or the coordinates of interest. In this case it's H19 non-coding RNA gene. And here we see there are three different subtracts, um, a green, a red, and a blue one, which correspond to the three different algorithms that were used to make the predictions. Now by default, I believe, um, this track has six subtracts, um, which are all enabled. However, I've only selected the ones that have structure representations associated to them. Uh, this is a subset of the total predictions that, oops, that um, essentially doesn't, that, that scores a bit higher than uh, all predictions. And that was simply to save space um, on my hard drive to view all these alignments. So this page is a bit of a description of the tools that were employed. We're just going to go back to the genome view. Now, the different the intensity of the bars or the color indicates the um, relative intensity of the scores associated to the predictions. So darker means more significant and lighter means less significant. Um, the thicker portion of the bars also shows regions that are within a base paired um, helix and the flanking regions outside are unpaired. So if we click on one of these predictions, it'll take us to another page that shows uh, the different um, statistics associated to the multiple alignment window, as well as an RNA structure topology and the associated alignments. Now this is standard RNA alive fold um, output from the Vienna software package. You'll see that the different colors indicate the amount of um, base pairs in the alignment, or in other words, the covariation of that, those columns in the alignment. Now, covariation simply indicates that there's sequence variation that's common to a uh, consensus structure. And these colors are highlighted on the structure here, too. If we zoom in a bit more, you can see that some of these bases are circled. The circles indicate that there's evidence for covariation or compatible base pairings in those columns of the alignment. The intensity of the, the letters of the bases here also indicates the amount of incompatible um, base pairs. Now it's important to keep in mind that these alignments are heuristic alignments, meaning that they're not perfect. As you can see, for instance, in this region here, um, there's surely better ways of aligning these sequences together if we use a more robust alignment tool. Finally, there's a second, uh, sorry, a consensus sequence and its associated secondary structure annotation in dot bracket format, as well as the free energy score and a measure of covariation associated to the prediction. So, in summary, that's pretty much it. 
um, you can browse to any region of the genome of interest and uh, view the associated structures. Um, there's quite a lot, so ideally you would want to use some sort of bioinformatics tool to, to do a high throughput analysis, but in any case, um, for more refined manual curation, this is hopefully a useful tool for you. Thank you.